Hi, I'm Dustin Abbott, and uh, you know, four or five weeks ago, I gave you a review of Luminar software, an alternative to you know Lightroom or Photoshop for those of you that are looking to own your software as opposed to going to a subscription model. Now, uh, a lot of you commented back to me at that point that kind of one of the main things that had held you up from considering Luminar as an alternative, if you had felt that way, was a lack of a library module. And I knew, of course, that Luminar was working on that, and so soon to be released will be the new Luminar 3 um, with a library module function. I'm going to give you just a quick look at that here today and see how that works in conjunction with the way that the rest of the software works. If you want a more extensive look at how either Luminar or Aurora HDR, which you can still run Aurora HDR as a um, out of Luminar as well, but I'm going to show you how that this new library module works and how you know how it kind of correlates with the develop module. So let's jump in. Let's take a look at the new Luminar 3. So the key difference that all of you have been looking for when it comes to Luminar is the addition of the libraries. And so when you open up the program, obviously you get a different look to come to. And so first of all, you have some options on the size of the thumbnails that you're going to display from quite small to, you know, quite large. And this also becomes a nice way to uh, just kind of look almost like a, a storybook look at uh, some of your images and to uh, showcase those off if you were, you know, just using this even as a way of demonstrating your work if you're looking uh, through it with uh, with a client or just with, you know, friends or family or whatever. And so um, it's, a, it's a nice approach when it comes to that. A couple other things I want to note is that one nice thing about the import process is that it actually will, um, in this case, for example, I imported just this November folder um, that I've been working from. And, and so it also imports all of the structure that I'd already created like via Lightroom or you know just manually created. And so you don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel when it comes to your, uh, your structure there. It's already going to be implemented um, into that. And so uh, that's, that's a cool thing. You can also sort by things like date and uh, other things like that. And so you have, you know, options, you know, you've got a variety of different ways that you can actually sort and show things. Um, you have the option of showing some, even if you've, you know, created some kind of rating system, some of those function functionalities are like similar to what Lightroom has, but is already built into here. So they've had the option to uh, bake some of that stuff into it. So then once you have selected an image that you're going to want to edit, you can just click over here on the edit panel and it will switch over into the edit interface. Now I am a Windows user and I understand from people from my last reviews, those of you that use Mac platform, that Luminar was originally developed for Mac and it, it still runs a little faster and more efficiently on that. And of course, you know, with any of these programs, your mileage will vary according to how beefy your system and its specs are. But in this case, on my system, as I've noted in previous uh, Luminar type reviews, that it runs a little bit slower for me than what Lightroom does. And of course, they, you know, continue to develop a lot. So your layout here like before you have the option of um, just quickly applying presets and one of my favorite things about luminar presets is you know unlike say a, a lightroom preset is the fact that you can do a real time um, you know edit of the amount of the preset and so that is um, an intelligent thing and and it's something that for whatever reason they've never been able to develop in lightroom and i certainly uh, prefer that as far as the way that most everything else here functions, it functions pretty much as before. Uh, Luminar allows you to select a custom workspace, so you don't have to just select a you know one of their Luminar looks per se. And by the way, you've got lots of different presets that are there. You have the ability to uh, create your own. You have the ability to you know download packets from of presets from you know you know, professional photographers or, you know, people maybe whose look you, you admire. And so lots of, um, lots of stuff there to access as far as those presets. But if you want to do manual edits, you can either select a custom workspace depending on the style of 
uh, photography that you have. And a new one that they've added is aerial photography. So if you're doing drone type footage, um, there are some presets that are specifically designed for you know the kind of images that you capture with that. And also they're working with that in terms of doing lens corrections for uh, some of those drones and their, the lenses that are in them. You also always have the option to click the add filters. And there are some unique things that um, that are you can you can use in Luminar that you can't use elsewhere um, and of course you, when you click one of these things and so some of them would be like their their smart filters and these AI filters they do all of the masking behind the scenes and so maybe if you are an advanced Photoshop user you prefer to have finite control over your masking and so I mean if that's you then Luminar is probably not your software but for a lot of people that maybe that's either beyond them or it's, you know too time consuming uh, to be able to use these smart filters is a really really useful thing because you can you know here is the the full intensity and so you can select how much of that you want but it's doing a lot of that masking of different areas behind the scenes and so so it's non-destructive on areas like that you don't want it to be applied to but as you can see it's made some positive changes to the uh, the original image and in the case of something like the sky enhancer in this image there is no really sky to work with and so it's intelligent enough to recognize there is no sky and so even though I've loaded it I can't pull the slider and that's simple because there's no sky to recover here and it's smart enough to know that and so rather than causing destruction to your um, to your image it just uh, doesn't allow you to do that now a couple of other things I want to highlight here just very quickly uh, you can install this as a plugin and I haven't done it yet with this you know brand new version this is Luminar 3 um, previous versions I've had installed where you can also run them as plugin plugins and so in this case I've got Photoshop I've got Lightroom it can be run out of both of those beyond that however um, you can also run it out of Photoshop elements and um, you can run it through aperture as well and so nice to be able to do that if you just want to access some of the plugins and some of the you know the basic photo edits but you don't want to use the libraries component or you don't want to you know use it completely in and that way you have the ability to run it as a plugin to where you return to wherever you came from with that and so the other thing too is that while again I haven't installed these yet on this you can also um, any of your a lot of your plugins that work like with Photoshop you can also install here and so um, you can actually run plugins like you know Topaz and things like that out of Luminar as well and so you know kind of the main improvement here is that whereas before you know you were kind of in the interface you were basically working with one image or doing some batch edits in this case obviously you have the ability at any point to select a, another image from the photo strip here on the side from your library and so you can switch over and start editing something else and so uh, that's a, a cool thing of course and uh, you know also here if you click the library tab you can quickly um, jump in and maybe go in into a different folder to load up here on this side and so it just gives you a lot of more a lot more flexibility when it comes to that all of these edits are non-destructive you know you can export an image if you want to finalize something at the end and uh, and so into the color space and the format that you want and then of course the the great thing here is you can always jump back right back into the actual library mode and uh, you know just look at photos or you know select another photo to jump in and work from so as you can see there are a lot of uh, core improvements here and i'm sure we'll continue to see further development on that but for those of you that were you know your number one priority was having that library module function the ability to organize images to you know use it less as a standalone one image at a time piece of software i think that um, we definitely see a lot of progress there and so you'll be able to do a lot of organization some metadata work all of that and and so hopefully it will become a more fully fledged lightroom or photoshop alternative for you the good news is for those of you that had already purchased Luminar 2018, you can get, I think on December 18th, this comes as a, a free update to you. And for those of you that are still um, have considered it and maybe would like to purchase now, get in now, there's both a special pre-release price at the moment, and then you can also use 
um, a promo code that they have provided for my viewers. If you look in the description down below, I'll try to keep that information current and so that you can always use that to get um, some money off to make it even more affordable for you. And so if this has interested you, go ahead and take a look in the description. You can find linkage there to go and to check it out and to see if Luminar 3 with libraries is going to work for you. I'm Dustin Abbott, and as always, you can follow me on social media also, and that uh, the script links are in the description. You can become a patron, um, sign up for my newsletter, and of course, if you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.